Wow, man. That voice right <laughs> there is, to me, one of the most reputable voices you're going to hear uh, in the court world of correspondence work. I've had a chance to work with him on the red carpet, and I swear to you, man, this, this guy is... Um, He's on a whole nother level when it comes to this stuff. He's yeah. at a whole nother bar. It's great when you can work around folks and then you don't feel the pressure because you know if you fumble the ball, they're always going to pick it up and score that touchdown. Mm-hmm. I've seen this dude work in, in many capacities from the talk on CBS, Wendy Williams show to uh, the Billboard Music Awards to uh, – what is that? The Center Fashion uh, oh, I did that. award show. Uh, yo, he held that down. Uh, he's been called uh, by some of our co-workers uh, the next best thing since Dick Clark himself. Um, the one and only, the one and only AJ Gibson is here. Woo! Come on, oh, wow, man. that's an introduction. Yeah, Come hell, on. I, I, didn't even throw, I didn't even throw it all in there. I got, I got a lot to live up you, to right now. No. Oh, man, I, I tell you, I, I often say it. In fact, I'm trying to think of where was I uh, recently, and um, we were talking about um, um, the, the Billboard. No, what, what just passed? American Music Awards. American Music yeah, Awards, couple, like, right? Last week, yeah. Last week. Did you do it? Yeah, I did. You did it? Yeah. Okay, how, okay. how'd it go? How'd it go? It's good. It's good. Yeah, I've been working with Dick Clark, as you know, for yeah. a few years now, uh-huh. and I do all of their major carpets. I do the Billboard Music Awards, American Music Awards, Golden Globes. Uh-huh. I've done the Academy of Country Music Awards. That was different. Get it. I did it. I did it. They called me one day and said, what do you know about country? I'm like, I grew up in Ohio. Uh-huh. I don't know a whole lot, but I can learn. Yeah, and I learned, and you learned and it. it. Yeah, and you pulled it off, man. Yeah. Uh, man, congratulations! And, and, and his irony of of it all: you grew up in Ohio. <laughs> I grew up, yeah, I grew up in Ohio, actually, uh-huh. a small conservative town, with, and I had a speech impediment my entire life. Uh huh. Wow. And so I, I was in Catholic school, and I'd walk out to this trailer out by the the playground every day, and go to Miss Martin and learn how to say my ethnic and my oath. Uh-huh. That's how I talked to, when I was a kid, <laughs> and now and now I talk for a living. So <laughs> yeah, did, who did, knew? Did the kids used to tease you at all? I got teased all the time. Uh-huh. I was a gay kid with a lisp in Ohio in a conservative little Republican. <laughs> Catholic town. I got teased for everything. But did you know you were gay? <laughs> yeah. Like, well, yeah. I mean, not till I was like six. Okay. You know, when most people figured out. No, I was I was young. I was super young when I figured it out. You you wow. uh you talk about your grandmother, yeah, uh, who played a very important role in your life. Yeah, even back then, she used to dress you in w- girls' clothes. No, that, that wasn't a common uh, thing. Uh, I just uh, uh, you know what, Sway. Listen, <laughs> is it her fault? Oh, you try you try to lay it out. Yeah, you trying to lay it out now to try to figure out the timeline. <laughs> No, she, uh, yeah, my grandma, uh, it's, I do talk about her. She's dead. Um, uh-huh. Damn, <laughs> the, you said that with pride. It's, no, it's, <laughs> in, it's in the book. It's, it's, book. it's a funny sort of narrative throughout the book. No, she was one of the greatest women on the face of the planet. She okay. was fantastic. Uh, she did not dress me in women's clothing. However, every okay. now and then, I might have grabbed something. There's a picture in the book of me in the dress I think okay. you're referring to. Yes. And, uh, but the, the more important thing is that she didn't stop me from doing it. Okay. That's what she meant to my life. She allowed me to be myself and to express myself. I've probably worn two dresses my entire life, uh-huh. mm-hmm. and both of them were because of her. And, I, one of them's in the book, and then yeah. later on, she put her wedding dress on me when I was about 12 or 13. Because uh-huh. she's like, you, you look like you're about my size when I got married. I wow. Like, That's terrible. That picture did not make the book. And, and so at, even as a youth, when you were putting on, on dresses, you joke about <laughs> yeah. you wanted to change gender uh, gender norms. Yeah. You, you know. Yeah. Um, what, what do, you, do you recall, what it, did it make a difference that it was a girl's thing or a boy thing? You just like the cut of the dress. No, it's, it's, so, it's so much more simple than that. I just okay. thought it was a fun moment. You know, okay. and it really didn't, it, it, and that's what I think is so important. I don't, I don't wear women's clothing. I haven't done it since I was probably twelve. Mm-hmm. But I also don't judge anybody who does. Right. I think the idea of of gender uh, neutral clothing is the next thing in fashion. I think it's important. Um, we see it with Kanye and Kim, mm-hmm. kind of doing a little bit of that vibe. It's everything's very neutral. I like that. Mm-hmm. I don't have a problem with Jaden Smith, you know, wearing what he wears and putting like a skirt on over a pair mm-hmm. of jeans. I, I have no problem with any of that. I never have. Uh-huh. Um, what do you, but how do you respond to those who do have a I, problem with I don't, it? I don't respond to them. Like, why okay. Why would I? Uh-huh. I mean, it's, it's not my job to try to, to try to change everybody. Yeah. It's my job to lead by example, be myself, and hope that inspires people to, you know, do the same. That's it. That's all okay. I can do. I'm not going to argue with people who don't agree with me. I've, I spent too much time doing that. It's a waste of time. Your, your sister's name is Carrie or Carrie? Carrie, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, one of the um, I actually read it in the book, um, uh, but it's also uh, something you see in the promo. Uh, your sister, who's a born again Christian, yeah, um, sat you down at one stage in your life and said, "We're gonna pray." Yeah, just a few well, years ago. Away? Oh, that was just a few years yeah. ago. It was one of the catalysts, actually, Sway, that, okay. that that 
led to this book. So uh -huh. this this book opens with three of my personal rock bottom moments in uh -huh. my life. Three mm -hmm. things that happened. Actually, one of them was two years ago today, which is pretty profound. Wow. Um, but with within a one year period, yeah. Um, one, I got fired uh, as the host of Hollywood Today Live, mm -hmm. which was my show, my national show I had on Fox, uh, which was my first big gig, mm -hmm. and I lost that, and I lost a lot of my identity in the process. Uh, and then my sister uh, took me to lunch for my birthday uh, a couple years ago and uh, decided to tell me that she now decided that I should pray the gay away out of the blue. She'd Jesus. met a man and got engaged and all of a sudden started going to a different church. Um, I go to church twice a week mm -hmm. with my boyfriend and all of my friends. Mm -hmm. I'm all in. Uh, but I was kind of an atheist for like 15 years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I grew up Catholic school and I was just really confused by so many things and judged by a lot of stuff and I just wasn't finding my place in the church. Um, I found it to be very judgmental and very just hard for me to deal with so I had to step away for a while. Um, but I'm all in now but her her view of me changed once okay. she started going to a different church uh -huh. um, and that was difficult and that was a really a, a rock bottom moment for me that I felt like I had to write about yeah. which wasn't easy to write about. And it's not been easy for our family to sort of process right now either. Still. Now, wow. the little book's been out for just a month now. And, yeah. and um, she hasn't responded. Uh -huh. I gave her the, the chapter that I speak of her in particular. I gave her that chapter months ago. I was going to ask. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, I mean, she knew I was going to write it. I talked to her about this last year and I started. Uh, and I tried to have the conversation with her. She's not open to it yet. And I'm okay with that. I get it. Yeah. I, okay. It's difficult for her. I understand that's her belief or her husband's belief, uh -huh. whatever it is, it truly is. I and mean, she feels like she made the statement, she has to stand by it now. Okay. But that's okay, but I can I, I can no longer allow that to like define me, which, yeah. which is why I wrote the book. And then the, the third moment, um, actually this is really wild that I'm even here today because first of all, you're one of my idols. You know how much I oh, love you. Like, you know, you are literally the, not only one of the most talented people I've ever seen in my life do what you do oh, thank um, you, bro. effortlessly, it. but you're, yes. you're literally, the fact that I'm even here right now, you're just the nicest guy. Agree. Like oh. you literally, he's one of the best people I've ever met. Easily. And I was so intimidated to meet you a couple of years ago. Um, to <laughs> work as with tall you, as you are. No, to work, <laughs> no, but come on. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, you still like Callaway, come on. <laughs> but like even to work with you, I was just so, I, I, I don't get nervous a lot, but I was nervous to work with you. And I was so blown away by you and, and I'm so impressed by you every day. And so just oh, even you, being bro. here today yeah. in particular, two years ago today, I almost took my life. Mm. which is wild because that's the third rock bottom moment that's that led right. to this book. Yeah. And uh, I received a tax bill after I lost my job and my sister had judged me and all these things happened that individually I could handle, uh -huh. but like that snowball effect kind of took place, you course. know? And I was like, I, I could, it was $16,000 and at the time it literally could have been 16 million. It didn't matter. Yeah. It felt like it was so overwhelming and it felt like I've been fired. So I'm, I'm not good at my job. Uh -huh. I was told I was all icing and no cake by an executive at Fox, and that really hurt me. Um, and then my sister. That's thinks, what he told yeah, you? That was that was the, that was the reason. Um, and then I was replaced what? by somebody. I'll let y'all look that up. Who's yeah. made a, Who's made a career out of being all icing? And he's fantastic. But yeah, for that exact reason was given to me, and that just really hurt. Uh -huh. um, it's time to jump on Google. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Tracy, it's, 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 it's the, <laughs> <laughs> right next to the man. AJ told me to do something. I'm gonna do it. Oh, no. no, it's. I was replaced by Ross Matthews. He's made okay, an entire Ross. career though, and he's very. He owns it. Yeah. He is icing, and he loves that, about, and that's great, and he's been a great advocate for our community. I'm a huge fan of his, uh -huh. right. but that specific reason, I'm like, that doesn't add up. That doesn't add you up. You can't replace me with Ross if you're looking for, like, a heavy, like, uh -huh. you know, substantial sort of, like, meaty sort of host to anchor the show. Uh -huh. The show is icing. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's what we are giving and that, you. And that plays on your maybe uh, insecurity. Or, totally. Yeah. And then I'm it. told that I need to pray the gay way, then I get this bill, and all these things just... My life wasn't going where I thought it was going to go, and so, I was I wasn't popping. I wasn't the next Dick Clark. I wasn't uh -huh. these things yet, uh -huh. and that was really really difficult. And two years ago today, um, I almost jumped out my tenth floor window. I wow. read that, yeah. And it, yeah. it just I've never felt so scared or so alone in my life. Uh -huh. um, I didn't know I, I didn't know how to talk to anybody about it. Uh -huh. I didn't tell my own family for almost a year. Mm -hmm. Until I decided to start writing this book, which, how, oddly enough, I started writing one year ago today. Yeah, I started. I wrote the first and, and, words wow, of this book. Man, wow. divine intervention, right. man. And, the I'm, glad, is wild. and I'm glad you made the right decision. And you here Thank to tell you. your Thank story. You. Thank you. Because it's a it's a multi layered one, and we only talked about three different things. Yeah. You know, we we haven't even talked about um, Ryan. Ryan, Ooh. my ex. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's so we'll, funny. We'll, like, we'll, we'll come back with okay, that one. Okay. 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 The, the book is called Flipping the Script. AJ Gibson, um, bouncing back from uh, life's rock bottom moments. If you've hit rock bottom moments, 
then you can relate to this book. It's something you should pick up. Everybody has a story to tell. We want to hear your story. Share it with AJ. 888-742-3345. AJ Gibson is here. Flipping the script, bouncing back from life's rock bottom moments. Uh, man, and this guy is very transparent about his life, uh, what he's gone through. I think a lot of folks could learn from it, uh, what you, how you dealt with adversity in uh-huh. your life. Um, and you had a lot of odds stacked against you, and you're here to tell this story. We know, for, we know already what we found out is that you got fired from Fox by an executive that said she was <laughs> too much cream and not enough cake. Uh-huh, uh, icing, 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 yeah. or whatever. <laughs> shit. Same shit. Same shit. I like your alliteration, though. You like, uh, yeah. whatever. I'm going I'm to use that now. Too much bullshit yeah. he came up with. Too right. much pudding. He couldn't even speak direct English to you to tell you that. Promised you that you're going to change. We're going to change uh-huh. daytime TV together. Yeah. Uh, but this other guy got more followers, so we're going to replace yeah. you now. Yep, mm. yep. Um, your sister wanted to pray your identity away from yeah. you. And, uh, wow. to, to, I like how you worded that, too. Your yeah. identity, not the gay. The identity. Yeah. I like yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's, mm-hmm. he's on. And then, <laughs> and then thirdly, Uncle Sam tried to just take more money out your pocket that Mm-mm. you didn't have at the time. The next year, you actually paid the same amount or uh, what were your taxes no like? I, it was much better the next year i handled it it was i i'm good um i i understood 1099 income better <laughs> okay yeah. yeah okay uh, i was like oh i gotta keep all this i had no idea no you don't and and, and then and then uh, amongst other things that's happened in this book this isn't a downer book it's an no. upper book so yeah. make sure you read it no it's funny yeah it, it's a lot of funny stories it's funny his 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 um uh, former boyfriend cheated on him yeah. with their best friend <gasps> mm-hmm. yeah Damn, Ryan. Yeah, Ryan. Yeah, that was that was a few years back, but that was uh, that was like 2011, and uh-huh. he and I and my sister Carrie, the one who later judged the gay away mm-hmm. or wanted to pray the gay away, uh, we were all living together, and we got cast. Okay, so I'd been brought in multiple times for like The Amazing Race and Survivor mm-hmm. and all these other shows kept trying to cast me and then me with my sister on Amazing Race and then me with my boyfriend Ryan on Amazing Race and it kept not working out. And when I first moved to LA, I thought that's going to be my big break. I'm going to get on a reality show. I'm going to change the game. Like oh, Nobody's going to forget my name. And I never got on. So then years later, this casting director left Amazing Race and went to a show on ABC that was being produced by Mark Burnett called Expedition Impossible. Uh-huh. It was on in uh, for one summer in 2011, then got canceled. We were up against Big Brother, big numbers, mm-hmm. hard to compete. But we got cast on this as a duo of three. We we're going to move to Morocco and compete against like uh, foot, you know Akbar, you know yeah, Akbar, yeah, he's a yes, good buddy of mine. Yes, yes. We met on that show. We competed oh. against them. We kicked their ass. Um, hey. Two gay guys and uh, knee high socks and a girl from Ohio beat three professional football players. Uh-huh. Um, but I made so many great friends on that show. But we did this a few weeks before I found out that Ryan was sleeping with our best friend Rob. How did no. you find out? Mm, some some just some text messages. They were a little drunk and a little bit loose, and I was feeling something. I've checked checked two phones in my entire life, mm-hmm. and I write about the other one in the book. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jimmy, when I lived here in New York City, cheated on me with a lead from a chorus line. But whatever. Um, <laughs> he was wearing gold lame tights. I can't compete. Yeah, but um, I've checked two phones in my entire well, life. Gay cheating is no, different, man. Look, I mean, cheating is cheating. It's all it's all the same. It's all it's, okay. all, it's, all, okay. it's okay. all shady. Okay, but uh, I've checked two phones in my entire life, and both times. I was right. So I don't know if that means I need to start checking more phones or if my instincts were just right twice. Exactly. Intuition. You raise the volume of it. But we didn't tell ABC. Okay. We went out into Morocco, spent a month together living in the wild, uh, sleeping in the Sahara Desert, hiking the high Atlas Mountains during snowstorms. I had chronic diarrhea for five days because I got altitude sickness and I drank a bunch of like shit water basically from the river Uh and uh, got so sick. I lost like 20 some pounds. But the whole time I had to pretend like we were still... A couple, uh-huh. and it was the most oh. miserable thing I've ever done in my entire life. And my sister was like a bikini model at the time, uh-huh. the, the born again Christian. She was she's the most gorgeous, <laughs> literally one of the most gorgeous women I've ever seen in my life. But uh-huh. at that stage in her life, she was just a bikini model trying to like figure out how to like summit a mountain with me, and it was just it was frustrating. Yeah, yeah. And so 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 how would how would that work when the cameras went off? Y'all would just not talk, or you know what uh, we were uh, we were it was such an intense situation at the time, mm-hmm. and we were so so in it. Like uh-huh. we wanted to win. He's a perfor- uh, former uh, professional roller skating like champion. He was a world champion when he was younger. Roller skating. Oh, wow. Roller yeah, skate. That's a thing. It's like ice skating but roller skates. He'd literally yeah. do like triple axles and shit. Yeah. Um, and my sister was a was a was a volleyball player in college, full ride volleyball scholarship. Uh-huh. And I played volleyball in college as well. And I, I ran track. And I mean, we we're all athletes. So we wanted to win. 
more than anything. I didn't care. And I also knew it was my chance to get on TV <laughs> okay. in front of millions of people. Yeah. And that was more important than like, wow, wow, woe was me. Uh-huh. I just got, you know, cheated on by... You know, Ryan. Yeah. 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 I mean, there was, I mean, there, there's layers to that story. I mean, yeah. real, truth be told, I mean, <laughs> right. we, we'd gotten together with this guy a couple of times. Like, okay. it, things had gone oh, down. Yeah, okay. Go. It wasn't, you, but yeah. I thought it was like, oh, we just going to experiment every now and then. Never because, and then all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, y'all just behind my back. Dude, oh, there's two of you. Oh, it's down, well, down you, to you, two. You invited to Fox in a chicken coop. You know, look, you're going to come back. You live, <laughs> you live, and you learn. I think my ego was most hurt that I was like, I was like, I thought he would choose me. Yeah, yeah that right. That awkward conversation was going to come up. I thought he was going to be like, AJ, I want you to leave him. And he didn't. And I'm like, what the? Oh, yeah. Okay. So are you done with threesomes now? Or what's up? No, I don't. It's, it's, it's not something I need. No, look, I look. I went through a phase in my life. I experimented. It was fun. That was an, also in a relationship that was going nowhere yeah. for yeah. years. There were a lot of other issues in that relationship that made me feel completely sort of unattractive and whatever. Mm-hmm. And um, I thought at the time we actually this is, this is crazy. We went to a therapist. <laughs> I love it. We were doing like no. I'll, I'll tell you everything. It's all look, it's all in the book. But I, we went to a therapist uh-huh. uh, for a relationship a couple of times and. First of all, I shouldn't have gone to a middle-aged gay man in West Hollywood for therapy yeah. to talk about my relationship because okay. his advice was, hey, try a threesome. I was like, really? What? He's like, try it. He's like, if you guys are open to it, I'm like, I'm what? I'm sure, whatever. I'm not getting any. He was trying any. to volunteer himself. No, no I think, the, the, I think the therapist was no. saying, hey, <laughs> no. bring, bring me home with you. I do home visits. No, the, no, the therapist could have got it. He was kind of cute. It was no, kind of awkward show, yeah, telling him my story. But uh, <laughs> So we, I was like, okay, sure, I'll try this thing. Uh-huh. And just so we're clear, my mom knows this whole story, so I'm good to tell anybody. Okay. But uh, I was like, all right, we'll try it. Uh, like, why not? I'm, I'm I'm okay with like being modern and trying to like get rid of like I'm, at the time. You have to remember at the time we weren't allowed to get married. Yeah. yeah, gay marriage was not allowed yet, and we had already been told our entire lives that like you're you're less than. Mm-hmm. So we didn't have this thing to work towards. Mm. This was you know this was mm-hmm. before you know Barack Obama and everybody supporting the gay community and the hip hop world even starting this, all these things that started to yeah. happen later. None of that was happening yet. Right. And so uh, I was like, okay, why not? I'll try it. And I was okay with it. Like, it was kind of fun. I was like, all right, I'm kind of cute. I guess I'm still kind of cute. And then I saw the text messages. I'm like, I guess I'm not that cute. You're not the cute guy. You're not the cute one in a relationship. Apparently. (laughs) But let me me ask you this, um, because, and these stories all sound fun, you know, and extremely entertaining. uh, But all of these stories played into why you had to write this book. Yeah. You know, and uh, having finished this book and completed this book, what are some of the things that you hope somebody that's reading it walk away with from this book? I want every single person who reads this book to know that they were created with purpose mm-hmm. and for a purpose. Yes. Uh, a lot of times people know one of those parts. They don't really put it all together. Yeah. And they don't realize that there is a journey that we're all supposed to go on and that that in order to uh, go on that journey successfully, we have to connect with one another. Mm-hmm. Right? No matter what your beliefs are, re- like religion or whatever it is you believe in spiritually, uh, Every one of us, you got to look at the world as one big puzzle, right? Mm -hmm. And every single person on this planet Mm -hmm. is a piece of that puzzle. And you need puzzle pieces from all these different people to put together your picture, the picture that is your life, right? But so oftentimes, especially when things start to get rough for us, when we hit rock bottom moments, we retreat. Yes. We start to go into ourselves. We get insecure. We don't want to talk to certain people about certain things because we think we might get judged. So we just pull back. And in this book, I really, I really wanted to go there. Uh, the first three chapters are kind of heavy, and then there are definitely rock bottom moments sprinkled throughout the book. But I talk about them as as successes. Mm-hmm. And I really want people to c- take away from this book that rock bottom is actually the best gift you could ever get mm. yeah. because it's there that you figure out who you are exactly because everything's stripped away mm-hmm. the friends that you thought you had are gone they've left you only the good the, the true ones have stuck by you at that point so it's really clear like okay who can i trust what do i need to do yeah because everything else isn't working and when you're at rock bottom there's nowhere else to look but up mm-hmm. and you can reinvent everything from rock bottom and i was able to do that and i wrote a book about it and and and, and we at the end of every chapter you mentioned this a little bit ago yeah. but we have, it's kind of written as a script. My little 22 year old sister, who does not judge me, uh, uh-huh. wrote the intro to every one of these chapters, 24 chapters. She's studying screenwriting in college uh-huh. right now. So she's now, and she also designed the uh, silhouette on the cover. Wow. But, uh, so you do those screen rewrites. Yeah, the, the script rewrites. The script are the, yeah. yeah. Are, uh, so I wanted to play on my time in Hollywood and, and um, do something a little bit creative for people. So the script rewrites at the end of almost every chapter are uh-huh. easily accessible, actionable items you can do in real time as you read the book. 
you can flip your script with me as I flip mine. Mm -hmm. You can log on to AJGibsonTV.com, and we've actually created my boyfriend, Emil. You know him. I know him. He, uh, yeah. He's so talented. Uh, and uh, he created uh, a document, a PDF file on my website. You can change the subtitle of your book. You can change the author to your name. And then you can do these script rewrites in real time right along you with do me. Do your own. And then at the end of it, you print out a new script. That you have a tangible copy of the script that now, that is the life you've just rewritten. You've wow. just flipped. So it, I, I want people to be able to take something away from this. That was and, uh, dope. That's a dope ass comment. Yeah. I try. Look, I'm trying. I'm really trying. Unique. I want to put something fresh out there. I want to put something different out there than just like, because I don't want people. It's part autobiographical. It's part self help, but it's not. I don't take myself too seriously. Yeah. Right. Um, but I also take myself very seriously. <laughs> but I, I do that in a way, um, hopefully, that is open and accessible to people yeah. that they can relate to. Because I'm not trying to say my problems are worse than anybody else's problems. Because mm -hmm. I know people who've been through so much shit that I can't even imagine. I'm just saying these are my experiences and it's okay for me to share them. It's also okay for you to share yours no matter how big or small they might be. AJ Gibson, man. Go to AJGibsonTV.com. Yes. Yep. Before you go, AJ. Yeah. We got this thing we do. Tracy, break it down. What is okay. it called? The Mystery <laughs> Go ahead and reach in. Well, it sways yeah, 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 yeah. uh, mystery I'm not, I'm not sack. I'm not doing it for you, so maybe. No, we're doing it. So, sway. <laughs> Let it go, man. That just took on a whole new meaning today. <laughs> yes, yo. Okay. All right, AJ. So you're going to stick your hand inside the sack. You're going to choose one question out of three. You're going to read it out loud and answer honestly. Wait, one out of three? You're going to do three one. different things. Oh, well, yeah. okay, we're okay. doing three? Yeah. yeah. Just, okay. Yeah. If you were Ariana Grande, <laughs> would you have kept the engagement ring or given it back to Pete Davidson? Ooh. Ooh. That's a weird relationship to me. I don't know why it ever started. Um, I <laughs> Grief? I, I would... I mean, I, if uh, I were her, yeah. I would give it back. Yeah, she's she's doing. I think she's doing a little bit better than Pete. <laughs> yeah. So like, yeah. I think that maybe maybe he might. I don't know. It was a hundred thousand yeah. dollar ring. Yeah. I would I would give it back. Arla. You would give it back. Yeah. Okay, oh, for cool. sure, for sure. Okay. She sang to me one time at the AMAs front row years ago, my first American Music Awards. And she sang. To she you? sang to me, and she told me I was handsome. Ooh. I looked behind me. There's nobody there. It was just me. It was a sound check. Mm -hmm. So so now just because you didn't make the threesome, still look, but look, Ariana look. think you're handsome. Look, I'm still I'm still open to some things. Swear, I don't know. <laughs> As I dig into your sack again. Oh, all right. Oh, easy, oh, oh, oh. easy, man. All right. What's the most embarrassing experience you've had with a celebrity? Oh gosh. Um. Oh, this one was. This one was just embarrassing, just because I I wasn't prepared. So we were interviewing um Golden Globes a couple years ago, and our stage was sort of uh, you could skip uh the the step and repeat and do all, all the press and then kind of cut through our stage to get into the venue mm -hmm. and so people will try to do that live on air and Ju <laughs> <laughs> julia louis dreyfus and her team her publicist came through to cut through and our our wrangler our talent wrangler said uh -huh. look look you can cut through here if you do our stage right. uh -huh. so it's a hot change meaning that we didn't have time to get new note cards from our producers we just had to start interviewing her and like usher somebody off the stage and quickly interview her so i say to her i'm like Julie Louis-Dreyfus, you're nominated again for Veep. I'm such a huge fan of yours since the Seinfeld days. I feel like you win this award every single year. She goes, well, actually, AJ, that's very interesting. I haven't won a Golden Globe since 1995. I go, wait, wait, huh? No, no. And I'm with Jeannie Mai, you know. Oh, and I she love Jeannie. Jeannie. And she, I think she immediately knows. It's like, AJ, no, she wins the Emmy. She went not the Golden Globe. She doesn't win the Golden Globes, like uh, literally ever. Uh, and I'm like, no, you win. She goes, no, honey, I have not. And then all of a sudden, you, the you look, start forcing it. You yeah, start the, forcing the era. So I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, yeah, are you sure? I'm like, no. Well, it, it, I go, I go, well, it feels like, it feels like you always win. She goes, oh, aren't you just so sweet then, honey? But I don't. <laughs> I felt stupid. And I heard her say bitch when yeah, she walked no, away. She totally did. <laughs> All right, she, the last she, one. Hasn't, she hasn't come back to my stage ever again. Okay. What would your exes say is your worst quality? Oh, am I allowed to give a best? Okay, my worst quality. Um, all icing. No, no, no <laughs> real, yeah, come on. Oh, I was, was going to make an all cream joke, joke but I didn't I was going to no. say that, too. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> to be fair, I've been with my current boo for six years now, so I'm a very different man than I was with my last ex. I would say that I, in the past, and sometimes now, I'm very uh, very hard on people Okay. because I have high expectations of them because I have high expectations of myself, mm -hmm. and that doesn't always translate into the most kind interactions. Uh -huh. I expect things to be done. I expect... Uh, I am a man of my word, so if you say you're going to do something, I expect you to do it always. Okay, that's so, not bad. That's not, not a terrible bad, thing. That's but not it's, terrible at all. But sometimes I'm kind of a dick about it, so okay, <laughs> that's, that's when it gets terrible. Yeah. AJ uh, Gibson, man. Hey, Pleasure. love you. Love all you, right, buddy. All Thank right. you. Keep, keep Thank continue you. success.
Thank I'm you, everybody. Flipping the Script is the name of the book, Bouncing Back from Life's Rock Bottom Moments. It's available now. You go online. Mm-hmm. Uh, AJGibson.tv. AJGibsonTV.com. Yeah. Yep. Go to AJGibsonTV.com. Oh. Amazon, Barnes & Noble, it's everywhere. And you can follow on social media at? AJ Gibson. There it is, man. That's my buddy, man. So I'll see you Woo! soon, okay? Thank you, buddy. I appreciate See you, you on the red carpet yes, soon. Yes, yes. Somewhere. Somewhere. All right? Yes. Okay. Uh, up next, who we got? Boots Riley. Yeah. Boots Riley did the film. Sorry to bother you. He's from Oakland. We went to school together. He's up next. Oakland, stand up.